Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. Now this video is gonna be all about basic wiring and how electricity gets from your battery into the car and how that power is distributed to the components or the rest of the vehicle. Now, it's important to understand this because if you're doing some troubleshooting or let's say you're adding a component like an amplifier for a sound system or a backup camera or anything else that you may add to your vehicle, it's important to know the legs of electrical distribution in the vehicle or in a car and how they work, when they work, and more importantly, what you need to do to hook it up to avoid, first of all, you want it to work right, that's, that's obvious, and secondly, you wanna make sure you don't hook it up somewhere where it's draining the battery. And the four legs that we're gonna talk about today for electrical distribution in the car are pretty simple. First of all, we have the ground, then we have the battery hot or battery plus power, then there are two switched powers or uh, switched outlets that are not on unless you turn on the ignition switch or turn the key or push your button. And that is the ignition power, which has two legs, primary ignition, secondary ignition. And then we have accessory power. And I'm at a point right now where I can demonstrate these to you and show you what they do so that when you're hooking something up, you're sure that it's hooked up properly and it's hooked up to where it needs to be so it operates and it's protected. So first thing is the ground and this wire comes directly off the battery and it gets hooked directly to the frame. So I have a good ground to my frame, which is a solid ground for the rest of the components that are in the electrical system. In order to get the ground from the frame to the engine, you just put a tie strap or a binding strap or a ground strap from the frame to the engine. That makes sure, uh, that will make sure that you have a ground, a solid ground from the engine to the frame to the negative terminal on the battery. A good ground is very important and if you have a poorly grounded component it can lead to failure from intermittent connection and uh, a good ground is important for components to work properly. Quite often you will see things fail because they're not properly grounded. Now the first leg we're going to talk about is battery plus or a hot lead to the battery. That's where the battery has the positive terminal, a wire comes directly off of the positive terminal of the battery and it gets to the fuse box and it's always hot, meaning there's always power there. And there are certain things in every car that remain uh, positively charged. If you don't have the key on, you don't have the ignition on, there's always power there. For, for example, your hazard lights always power. You don't need a key to turn on your hazard lights. The brake lights, your headlights will be always on. And if you have a newer car uh, with a key fob with a remote control, there has to be power to the computer because as you walk up to the vehicle, the vehicle senses the remote and it tells the car or the computer that, yes, the correct remote is close to the vehicle, so it will allow me to unlock it. So let's take a look at how the power gets from the positive side of the battery into the vehicle and ultimately ending up at the fuse box. Next wire is battery plus or battery hot. That comes right off the battery and goes to the starter relay and the power passes from one side to the other and the big wire here goes right down to the starter. You gotta have full power from your battery right to the starter to start the engine. The reason it's called battery hot or plus is because there's always power there. I have my test light here hooked up to a ground and if I touch it here, I have power. I don't have power anywhere else. It's not going through the relay. There's no power on any one of my, anywhere on my blocks. There's, there's no power anywhere, but it does, does go right there. But where it goes from here is really important, how it gets to the fuse box. Now the power has to get from here, the battery plus where it comes in, and it has to get to the fuse box. So you wanna have it fused. You don't wanna have just a, a wire going there without protecting the system. And this is what came with the wiring, uh, wiring harness I bought, or it came with the kit. It's just a, a basic wiring harness. And this is a fuse, a 30 amp fuse. Uh, and you can simply just clamp this or uh, attach it in the, in the wire that goes from the relay to the fuse box and you have a 30 amp protection. And that is one way to do it, but I prefer to do something different. In here, there is a 30 amp fuse which is screwed to the chassis. That's what's holding it in place. So as you can see, again, I have power over here where the power comes in. I have power at the fuse right there. Power at the fuse, 
on the other side power going through the fuse so I make sure the fuse is okay and then the wire that goes from this side of the fuse over here goes to the fuse box so again I have power from my fuse my 30 amp fuse going right over to my fuse box and I have a nice hefty uh, 10 gauge wire that feeds the fuse box to make sure I have plenty of power so even with the power off or with the key off where does the power go to this is already hooked up to battery plus so I will have power to my headlights like I said here is the plug for the headlight and I have power to my headlights so power is going to my headlights um, I have power to my brake over here is my brake switch so I have power to my brake right here if I go in here I have power there power to my brakes um, of course to my ignition switch here's my ignition switch I have power to the ignition switch I have power that goes this is the steering column uh, steering column connector. I have power that goes to the horn relay. You can hear that clicking. And this goes to the brake light. So I have power right now, even though the key is not turned on, I have power to my headlights, brake lights, uh, horn, those kinds of things that you want to have active even when the key is off. So now this is where the branches of electricity start to get distributed from the ignition switch. Like I said, we have power here. This is power right from the battery plus, okay? But I don't have power anywhere else. The orange wire is accessories, accessory power. Like I said, you have accessory power and ignition power. Here is coil power or ignition power, which is the pink wire. And the purple wire sends power to the neutral safety switch, or it might go to your clutch switch or, or something. If you have a manual vehicle, it lets the vehicle know or let your electrical system know that the car is in neutral or you have the clutch pushed in so you're not trying to start with the uh, the transmission engaged in gear so I have power here so now the important thing is what happens when I turn the switch and here's the two things we're gonna pay attention to we're gonna pay attention to accessory power and ignition power okay so I'm gonna take the switch and I'm gonna turn it just once like that like you were turning your car on and all of a sudden I have power now to I have power to accessories and I have power to ignition voltage both of them right I also I won't have power to my uh, my neutral safety switch until I try to start the vehicle so I have power here and power here so if you're trying to hook up something you hook up uh, extra or you're looking to, to tie in somewhere when you turn the key on I have positive voltage here and I have positive voltage here but what's what's the difference between the two well here's what the difference is when the car is off when you have your car off and you don't have any voltage and let's say you want to listen to the radio or you want to just have the car you want to use some power without having to have it ignition on you don't want to have power to your coil because that will drain down the battery very fast that's how you kill your battery so what you do is if you take your key and when you turn it back one if I turn it backwards, I will have power to my accessories here. This is my accessory power, but I will not have ignition power, nor will I have power to my neutral safety switch. So I have accessory power. That means with the key turned backwards, I can use my accessories. Now I'm going to put it back in the middle. So here we are back in the middle, and the key comes out. So this is where you would put your key in. So now when I go to start the vehicle, this is why this is important because when you go to start the car now I have power again I turn it on one I have uh, accessory and ignition voltage that means power is going to my computer my spark box O2 controller all that stuff that needs to start the engine but I also have problem go uh, electricity going to my accessories like the radio and all the other things turn on your dashboard your gauges everything else gets power but this is what the difference is I have two different legs of voltage when I turn it on. If you remember I said there's ignition power and the primary ignition. The primary ignition is when you have power that goes to your uh, coil, it powers up your points, the, the distributor, if you have a power distributor that's what it powers and then you have your secondary ignition. The secondary ignition is the power that goes from the coil through the distributor cap to your plugs. So right now I have these two separate legs. I have ignition power so it powers all my electronic components like the computer then I have my accessory power so I'm going to take my switch like I said and I'm going to turn it on just one and now I will have power to my ignition and I will have power to my accessories
And I have these separated for a reason. I have the black wire, or this red wire with the black heat shrink on there. Let, let me, let, that lets me know that this is the accessory leg and this is the ignition leg. It just helps keep them separate in your mind. Here's the difference. I'm going to try and do this now. I'm going to put this on here and I'm going to turn the key. So now I have power to ignition, right? I'm going to turn the key like I'm starting it. Okay? You notice, you notice how the light stays on? So the ignition power never goes off when I turn the key. However, if I put it on accessories here and I turn the key, the light goes off. Okay? And here's where I run into many problems and solve problems for people who are having problems when they're hooking things up, especially like your MSD box. If you hook your MSD box up to accessory power, what's going to happen is when you turn the key, the ignition is going to have power, but it won't have power on the accessory. So when you turn the key, the power goes off to the accessory, the, the MSD box, your spark box, shuts off, and you never get spark to the plugs because the, the accessory circuit shuts off when you turn the key. So that's the difference between the ignition voltage and the accessory voltage. That's why it's important to keep those two separate. Now, when you're hooking things up, let me, let me shut the key off so I don't have the battery running. Ignition voltage here is for all of your ignition components, computers, um, your uh, any kind of uh, your fuel pump, everything's going to be hooked through that to, to have it constantly on when you have the, the things you absolutely need to have running to start the vehicle. Accessory voltage, this is where you're going to hook up accessories that no, don't need to be on all the time. For example, if you're going to add an amplifier, uh, if you're going to have a huge amplifier and a lot of power, you're actually going to want to hook it over here right to the battery plus because that's going to draw a lot of power. You don't want to draw through your circuit breaker or your fuse box because that's a lot of power. But if you're going to hook up something simple like a backup camera, uh, any kind of accessory, you want to add a 12 volt outlet, you hook it to your accessory side of your ignition. That way you can use it without having the ignition on and you can turn it on and off and, and then you can fuse it from here. Now these are fused in the fuse panel. This has an accessory fuse and you have an ignition fuse so both of these circuits are protected and they're separated even though they're on the same uh, same strip here this is not they're not connected together. This the, You can see the strap here and the strap here so I have basically um, eight connectors for eight connectors for uh, ignition voltage and eight connectors for accessories. I also have a ground strap here. Now this ground strap up on top, this goes right to the frame here, ground. I got a big ground wire here, nice big 10 gauge wire. And I have a lot of ground lugs here because I have many things that need to be grounded and I don't want to tie them all together or solder a bunch of wires together. I want to take a wire and run it directly to the ground so if something happens to a component, let's say something happens to the spark box or something happens to a relay or something, I don't have to unsolder a bunch of connections to disconnect it from the ground. So this is a easy way to do that and you have easy way to disconnect the ground at any point in time. Now finally the starter circuit. In the ignition harness with the key, the purple wire goes to the neutral safety switch, it sends power to the neutral safety switch and the power from the neutral safety switch returns here to the starter relay. And when you turn the key, power goes through the switch. As long as you have it in neutral, it will put power to this side of the coil or the relay. It'll engage the starter on both sides, so it'll pull in the relay. The power goes to the starter, down to the starter, and this is the starter solenoid which engages the starter itself. So power for the starter to turn, power for the starter to engage with the solenoid, and this comes from the neutral safety switch. That's important. So this is a ignition momentary on when you turn the key, that's what starts it. And when you turn the key off, power goes away from that. I don't have it hooked up now because I don't want to start the engine or turn over right now. I just want to illustrate what those wires come from and how that really works. So don't be afraid to work on the wiring and wire things up yourself. Yes, it is confusing and it can be very time consuming and I know a lot of people hate it. It is a difficult portion of building a car, working on a car, but here are some basic tips that'll help you uh, 
be more successful when you're doing it. Okay, first of all, ground. Make sure you have a good ground. Make sure the battery's grounded and whatever you're wearing, make sure it's to an actual ground. Sometimes you'll find a metal part under a dashboard or a metal part somewhere and you screw to that or attach to that, but that metal part is not necessarily attached to the frame or the ground of the vehicle. So you can use a multimeter just to make sure you have continuity to a ground. That's pretty simple. Secondly, know the difference between ignition power and accessory power. What are you hooking to? Make sure that you're hooking it up to something when, when you read an instruction or you're hooking something up and it says it needs battery plus voltage. Well, is it something that needs to be powered all the time, even when the car is off? Then you hook it to the positive side of the battery terminal. If it needs to be, if it's an accessory that you only want to use occasionally when you have the vehicle in the accessory position or just the button pushed on your dashboard with no key not being started, then it's an accessory. You're looking for accessory power. And then finally, ignition power. Is this something that needs to be running in order for the vehicle to start? If that's the case, you have to make sure you have an ignition voltage and it doesn't shut off when you go to start the car. Just follow those basic steps. Understand each branch of power, where it goes, and how it gets started. Test it with a simple light to make sure that you're getting the right kind of voltage. Keep them separate, like I have them separate. My ignition voltage on top, my accessory voltage on the bottom. I have my ground, and I know where I have battery voltage if I need to grab it. Follow those simple rules, take your time, and I promise you can do it yourself if you try. Just have some patience, go through it, and you'll do fine. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.